Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Sip and Share. I'm super excited to have with me today at Bluefish Kitchen and Bar owner and chef, Connie Freiberg. So this is exciting. Say hi, Connie. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Bluefish. <laughs> so this is really exciting for me and I, and I hope it's exciting for those that are listening and watching because today, it's, at, least, at least for me, it's kind of we're taking the veil off of the woman that owns not only the Bluefish but three other restaurants in Michigan. Wow. Yeah. And I think this is a good opportunity for our viewers to get to know you. Okay. So if you could please just give us a, a brief little background on, on who you are and why you decided to open up the Bluefish here in Manistee. Okay. Well, oh, well um, first, but first, oh, but first, we have to have our morning well, mimosa because cheers, we are doing this at nine o'clock. Yeah. Outstanding. Oh, that's lovely. Wow. That's not gonna last. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Oh, like my life story, my story from here. Um, well, I opened the Blue Cow in Big Rapids was my first restaurant. So um, my husband, I was catering in Houston. My husband came home one day and he goes, I can't live like this anymore. And I go, what do you mean you can't live like this anymore? And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm 40, I'm fat. He's leaving me. No. I'm like, this can't be. And he's like, no. He goes, I can't live like this traveling and I don't like the kids and the big schools and all that. He goes, I want to go home. And I was like, home? He goes, yeah, I want to go to Michigan. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. We lived in Texas for 30 years. I mean, sure. I thought I was going to die in Texas. He goes, no, I want to go home. I want to be closer to my mom and dad. And he was born and raised in Big Rapids. So I said, all right, we'll go check it out. So we go up in January and I'm thinking, I can talk him out of this idea <laughs> because it's going to be like snowy and everything. But on that particular day, Big Rapids just looked beautiful. The snow was falling down the main street and it was all pretty and everything. And I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, what are we gonna do here? And I'd been doing catering. Sure. And I was getting tired of catering because it's back breaking, you know, lugging stuff around and everything. And he goes, well, you know, you always wanted to have your own restaurant where people come and eat your food and you don't have to haul it around. And he goes, if you move to Michigan, we'll buy this building right here. It was a pet store. <laughs> he goes, we'll buy this building right here and you can put your restaurant in there. And I was like, he had me hooked. It was the carrot on the stick. I'm like, okay. We're doing Went it. back to Texas, told all my friends I'm going to Michigan. I'm gonna open a restaurant. And I did, and it was not easy. It was a huge learning curve between catering and doing a restaurant. So I was just really blessed. I hooked up with this chef who opened the restaurant with me. <clears throat> and he helped me transition all my great catering recipes into things that could go out on the plate so I used to do a great, this, my champagne chicken was a casserole. <clears throat> and it was something that was really great when you were doing it as a caterer because it would hold and yep. everything. And so my chef said, okay, we're gonna be able to do all the flavor profile that you have in this, but we're gonna be able to get it to go out to the table one at a time. And so he helped me with that transition. He's still my executive chef there. He still has been with me now 13 years. Wow. So yeah, which is amazing longevity yes, in this is. industry. <laughs> it's hard to find. Um, I've had that a lot. I've had people that have worked with me in Big Rapids that are here now and you know that I've taken people and kind of when they wanted upward mobility, taken them to other restaurants and given them opportunities. So it's kind of nice that way because I think people when they come to work for me can see that there is a potential to move around or to do something more challenging within our, our little organization of, of three locations. So well, It turns out to be not just a job. Yeah. It's a career. Yeah. So Manistee is a, a really interesting story. So um, Big Rapids had a mayoral exchange program. So a bunch of the city leaders of Manistee were in Big Rapids, and I guess a bunch of the city leaders from Big Rapids were over here in Manistee. Mm -hmm. And the mayor at the time asked me if I would cater a luncheon. And we weren't really doing much catering because um, I wasn't really set up for it. But he was like, no, you know, I really want you to bring your food over here to City Hall so these guys can check it out. And I said, okay, you know, I, I can do that. Um, so I did the luncheon, brought it over to City Hall, and then um, Travis Alden at the time was the DDA yep. director, and he said, you know, we have a restaurant that's empty over in Manistee. It's for sale. And it's huge. Yeah. I mean, you should, <laughs> should come take a look at it. So we came in August, and we decided to make a beach day of it, you know. We'd come go to the beach and check out 
this restaurant and I remember walking around the outside of it like this is like 10 times you know the size of my restaurant in Big Rapids which is a smaller more of a little bistro type place and I it was kind of a, it was intimidating and I was like oh I have, I have no idea you know and then um, there was an opportunity to help acquire the building there was a grant at the time a, a building acquisition grant and everybody thinks it's like oh that was just a pile of free money no we had to match that grant with equal investment into oh. the restaurant. So even though 30, I guess it was $330,000 was put into play to help us buy the restaurant, we had to show that we, in the first 24 months, reinvested $330,000 into the restaurant, which was easy to do because this thing <laughs> needed a needed lot of a lot. work. Oh my gosh, so we finally, finally came back, I remember it came back with the, with the realtor and we were walking around in the restaurant. So we go upstairs to the banquet room and it's really spooky because it looks like they had just had a banquet and then <laughs> disappeared. Like there was still <laughs> stuff on the tables and, and everything. And there was this white stuff all over the chairs. And I'm looking at these chairs trying to figure out what is this white stuff on these chairs? And my husband opens the double doors to the storage closet. And all of a sudden this huge flock of birds comes and starts flying around in the room while oh, I'm standing there the and I realize stuff. it's bird poop. These birds have pooped all over these chairs and tables. And I told my husband, no, no, there is no way. We are not doing this. <laughs> this building has holes in the roof. There's birds flying around wow. in it. There was, it was crazy in the walk-in cooler. I opened the walk-in cooler and it was like, there was like these butter packets, but they, they, they sort of looked slightly deflated. They'd left butter in the walk-in cooler for five years and the butter had dehydrated into powder, but the wrappers were still intact. That's creepy. Oh yeah, it was super creepy. Like, <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah. And it was, just, it was just like, I said, oh my gosh, there's gonna be so much cleaning, so much scrubbing and so much fixing and everything. And my husband's like, no, we're gonna do it. This is a great opportunity. Yeah. And no regrets no regrets at all it's been it's been this has been a fantastic journey for us this town is amazing i bought myself a little house i want to know if it's the tiny if it's the tiniest house it's 700 square feet it's the cutest little tiny house um and then i realized in hindsight i should have bought a bigger house because i've had staff living occasionally with me sometimes in the summer we bring in extra help and it becomes kind of a bunkhouse and sometimes it's just my place but it gives me, it ties me here, I feel like, because yep. I can come and I can stay for weeks at a time and spend some time really working on the restaurant, either trying new recipes or doing menu development or just kind of hanging out in the community, going to the Vogue and going to the beach. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun here. It really well, you, is. Well, you, you bring up the, the tie to the community, trying to be here and go into some things, going to other events. But you have four restaurants. So I think sometimes that people or like, well, where is she? Where is she? Where's the owner? <laughs> I think this is a good opportunity to let people know that, you know, wow, you own four restaurants. That's got to be yeah. amazingly difficult. How do you do it? Well, the key is their staff. I mean, 100% your staff. Like, I'm not the first person in the world to own, you know, multiple restaurants. You take somebody like Bobby Flay or Gordon Ramsay or whatever, they're, you know, they have tons and tons, but they're mostly at that point functioning as a consultant. I'm not at that stage in yeah. my life. I'm still pretty much hands-on, but I can step away from the blue cow because I've had that chef that's been with me since I've opened the doors, you know, and he loves it when I'm there. We collaborate, we come up with new recipes, we launch new menu items, but when I do have to step away, there's no deficits at that restaurant. It's running at the same, you know, level that it always runs at. Here I have Chef Eric, who's been, who started with me in Big Rapids and has been, was with me there for four years before he came over here. And now he's been here, you know, for another four years. So I'm just lucky that way. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I've got, I've got good people. And that's the key to running any successful business. Any business owner will tell you that, that the key to your success is in the quality of your staff. So um, Derek Cameron's been my manager here, started out as a server here, been here since the get-go. So he does a really yeah, good job. he does a good job. Well, you've got oh. the blue cow, okay, and obviously the blue fish where we're at today, which yeah. we all love. Uh, you've got two ravens. Two ravens. So the first raven is connected to the blue cow. 
And that was a really unique opportunity because we had a deli that was next door to us and they closed and the day that they closed, I got a hold of the building owner and I was like, I want, I want this building. Because first off, nobody likes a, a new restaurant right next door competing with you. But also, the great opportunity there was when you share a wall, you can use one liquor license, which as you know yeah. in the liquor business, it's not always easy to get a liquor license. There's only so many that are allocated into a community. So, and also too, Blue Cow was the fine dining venue in the community and we were getting everybody who you know wanted to celebrate birthday or anniversary or special occasion because we were fine dining. The Raven aspect gave us also the fast casual concept. People could come in and get you know barbecue sandwich or um, tacos or street tacos, our number one seller there, you know, um, modeled off of a taco that I had in Mexico and I was like, okay, this is made with barbecue. I want to do this you know, back in Big Rapids. So, um, and it's real popular. So, so that works out neat because I have some cross utilization of staff and, sure. and we share one cooler and we share a dish machine. So it just makes it, makes those run really nice, you know, so it's kind of a something for everyone in Big Rapids thing. So. And you and you bring different concepts everywhere you go. So I mean, how, you know, in your background in the restaurant business, juggling four, three different menus. And now, how do you pick? Like, how did you come up with the menu for the Bluefish here? I mean, did you come up with the name first and then try to put the, no, the menu to it? No, I don't. Or was it because of the being close to the lake? It's being close to the lake. So I wanted, you know. We try to do local and seasonal wherever possible. We get relationships with local farmers and things like that. And so I was thinking, all right, we're going to be on the Great Lakes. And unfortunately, you can't buy fish out of Lake Michigan. <laughs> I learned that after we bought the restaurant. I'm like, what? we can't just get fish from over here? No, but we can get Great Lake species of fish. Well, I guess maybe speak to that a little bit before we wrap it up. Why don't you <laughs> tell everybody who's watching or listening if there's anything you'd like to tell them, tell them now. Okay, so um, November, we're doing November to Remember here at The Fish. So um, we're gonna try to do some sort of promotion for every day of the week. So Monday, we're gonna do Meatless Monday. So we're gonna be offering a rotating um, vegan vegetarian option. So if you're vegan vegetarian, you can come in and find something that's cool and off menu. Um, Tuesdays are trivia, which always cracks me up because Manistee's intellectuals come together to <laughs> battle in, uh, every Tuesday. We've got the doctors and the lawyers and the people that work at the hospital and you know, the school, and it's fun. It's a lot of fun um, watching them battle it out for um, who will reign supreme in trivia. <laughs> Wind Down Wednesday is a killer deal. So you get your choice of a house for Caesar salad, um, two petite champagne chickens, and a bottle of red or white wine that we, we choose every week, something different, and then a mini mousse for dessert, and that's 30 bucks. That's really cheap. Oh yeah, two for 30. So that's you know your chance to experience the blue fish like a high roller on, on, on a shoestring budget. So, and then Thursdays, I'm hoping you'll come out and um, do cocktails with us. Yep, so absolutely. We're gonna try to do a little cocktail class, which would be a ton of fun. And then we have our normal weekends. Our Sunday brunch is really popping. We've got this Bloody Mary now that's got bacon and shrimp and all kinds of things going on with it. It's practically a meal, so if you don't really want to eat food but just have a lot of fun on a Sunday, you can come get this cool Bloody Mary that we're doing. But yeah, that's what I want to tell people. Come see us in November, November to remember. <laughs> what do you got going on for Slay Bell? Oh, gosh, yeah, What's we're going to do. Yes. We're doing an after party with a band called Clear Heels, which yeah. I've heard is an amazing they are fantastic. party band. We love them guys. So, Manistee yeah. loves them guys. So I, I'm inspired by, have you ever been on a cruise ship and they've got the dessert buffet? I thought, I want to do like a cruise ship dessert buffet. So we're going to have this huge long table up in the, up in the banquet room and I'm going to have all kinds of desserts piled on this tech cream puffs and pedophores and cheesecake and creme brulees all of this, so when you get here, it's a $15 ticket, and those are coming out on Eventbrite next week. $15 ticket, you get a welcome cocktail, which will be some sort of Christmassy, cranberry, mm -hmm. fun, fizzy thing. And then you have access to the dessert buffet, which will be set up during the event, and then we'll have the band rocking and the bar open up there and dancing, and we're just gonna like, we're just gonna rock out Sleigh Bell night. It's gonna be great. 
Outstanding. So, yeah. Connie, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers.